The Turkish Super League may not be renowned for its world-beating football, but one thing you can't say is that it's boring. Today we will look at the iceberg of the Turkish Super League, created by r slash Super League subreddit. Some of these topics may be sensitive to some viewers due to themes such as violence and racism being covered in this video. Viewer discretion is advised. And without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Tier 1. The 2000 UEFA Cup This refers to Galatasaray's triumph in the year 2000, where they won what we call today the Europa League, and they won the UEFA Super Cup as well. To this day, they are the only Turkish club to ever win any European silverware. Istanbul teams. This refers to the fact that the league has predominantly been filled up with teams from Istanbul, with 8 out of 20 teams being from the Turkish city. Istanbul is the biggest city in Turkey and it makes sense as to why they have the most teams in the Super League, as the city has the most business opportunities. Bursa Spor. This is a team located in the city of Bursa. They are only one of two teams to ever win a championship and not be located in Istanbul, winning it in 2010. However, 13 years from then, Bursa Spor find themselves in the third tier of Turkish football and are in dire straits financially. They were seen as one of the biggest clubs in Turkey, but now are unfortunately a laughing stock. Big Four Relegation This refers to the traditional Turkish Big Four's inability to get relegated. None of these teams have played second division football, apart from Trabzonspor. However, since joining the first tier in 1974, they haven't gone down since. Tier 2 Koltuk Warfare This refers to a match played between Besiktas and Galatasaray in 2013. The match would be abandoned in the 92nd minute where after Galatasaray player Felipe Melo received a red card, the stadium would go crazy and supporters would invade the pitch and attack security personnel and riot police. They would throw chairs as their main way of attack. Sunus Flag Play This refers to the Turkish Cup match played between two bitter rivals, Galatasaray and Fenerbahce. It was the cup final and Graham Sunus was the manager of Galatasaray at the time. His side would go on to win the cup. During celebrations, he would obtain a Galatasaray colored flag and run down to the middle of the field and try to dig the flag into the pitch. The thing is, the stadium they were playing at would be Fenerbahce's home stadium. And this didn't go over too well with Fenerbahce supporters, who were furious. Galatasaray wouldn't be able to celebrate the cup because they had to be escorted out of the stadium for safety purposes. 2011 Champion This refers to the infamous match-fixing scandal that took place in the 2010-2011 season. Trabzon Spor would be on track to win the title this season for the first time in a while. However, Fenerbahce would fix matches in the league as well as pay other teams in the league extra money bonuses to beat Trabzon Spor. Fenerbahce would go on to win the title by goal difference, however would not enter the Champions League due to UEFA banning them because of their actions. In a crazy turn of events, the court case for the trophy would be ruled in Fenerbahce's favor, where the judges said that the evidence was gained illegally and therefore couldn't be used. To this day, Trabzon claims that they are the rightful champions of Turkey, but the TFF has given the honor to Fenerbahce. Big Four Severe Debt This refers to the insane debt that's been racked up by Turkey's biggest clubs. This would basically shut down any other club in any other league, however the Turkish government forgives some of the debt that these clubs have accumulated. In 2021, the debt reports were claimed to hit almost $2 billion. Tier 3 well guys, now we're getting into the rabbit hole, and the first thing in tier 3 is Eskişehir Spor. This team is based in the city of Eskişehir. They used to be a strong side in the Turkish Super League, and would even win super silverware, such as the 1970 Turkish Cup and the Turkish Super Cup. Adding onto that, they would come close to winning a top flight title, being runners up 3 times. Their last season in the top flight would come in 2016, where years of mismanagement would finally catch up to them. Since then, they have not only made a return, but are now playing at the semi-professional level, in the fifth tier of Turkish football. For such an historic club, this is sad. However, they only have themselves to blame. Fener 5 stars This refers to the fact that Fenerbahce has rebranded their logo to include 5 stars. Although officially winning 19 titles, they are only permitted 3. So why do they insist on 5? Well, because they claim championships before 1959 should count. And, well, basically the top flight of Turkish football was created in 1959. However, they want to count league titles in the early 1900s as championships. However, some of these league titles they are claiming only had 8 teams participating, and it was a regional league, meaning the only teams that Istanbul were in the league. 
This claim for 5 stars has been rejected by Turkish Football Federation, and other clubs laugh at them for this. Offside Timsa. Uh, sorry, I probably mispronounced that one. But this refers to a goal that was cancelled in the match between Galatasaray and Sivaspor. With no official line drawn, the goal was ruled offside by VAR. This sparked outrage because, come on guys, how was this offside? The word offside, which means offside in Turkish, started trending on X because of it. Zokora Emre. This refers to the incident between Emre Belezolo and Zokora, where Emre said a racial slur to Zokora right in front of the referee and went unpunished. Well, so he thought. Because the next time the two teams met, Zokora and teammates got revenge on Emre, fouling him and kicking him, leaving Emre in immense pain. Rong Onana. This refers to Besiktas' last transfer window, where they brought in a player named Jean Onana from Lille for 4 million euros. The twist is that the, there's a theory. <laughs> Alright, sorry, this one's kind of funny. The twist is that there's a theory that they brought the wrong Onana. They meant to buy Amadou Onana, who played for Lille but was transferred to Everton. As Jean Onana has barely played first, fo first team football for Lille, and Amadou is the one that played for Burak Yilmaz at Lille. However, these two are both around the same age, 22 and 23, and they both come from African descent. So they probably brought the wrong Onana, making this an expensive mistake from Besiktas. Tier 4 Kadıköy Alligator Dance In the 2009-2010 season, all Fenerbahce needed to do was win their last game at home and the title would be theirs. However, the match in their home stadium ended 2-2. The announcer would state that due to Bursa also tying 2-2, Fenerbahce would be declared champions. This would be followed by many fans running onto the pitch, celebrating their hard-earned title, dancing, crying, and they're filled with joy. Until the announcer had realized that he had been relaying fake news and Bursa would be the actual title holders. Fans of Fenerbahce were shocked and went mad. They tried burning the stadium down. Kai said it 2008. This refers to the team from Kayseri, who would reach the Turkish Cup final in 2007. They would lose 1-0 in the final to Besiktas. However, due to Besiktas placing second, they had already qualified for Europe. Kayseri would be handed the Europa League qualifying spot. However, that season, Kayseri would be relegated to the second division, placing 17th. And they would actually play out their qualifying fixtures while in the second division. And they would actually go on to beat Maccabi Tel Aviv in the second qualifying round. But their luck would end there, as in the playoff round, they would lose 9-0 on aggregate to Atletico Madrid. Imagine if a Turkish second division team was in the Europa League. Unfortunately, Kai said it would dissolve in 2018. Torreira turns green. This is a more lighthearted one. In a Turkish league match to cover up the awful state of pitches throughout the league, they would thought it was a good idea to paint it green. So Torreira would look like this after playing the match. He would then post an Instagram story of a mini green hulk, laughing at the fact that the pitch was painted. Besiktas Bursa This refers to a crazy brawl between the two team supporters before the game. They would see each other in public and many of these supporters threw glass and two Bursa supporters were going to uh, keep this as PG as possible but they got poked by something that usually is um, in the kitchen. Thankfully no one would pass away due to this brawl, the two teams don't really like each other. Tier 5 Yum Yum Interview This refers to when after a 3-0 loss, Trabzonspor's president at the time, Mehmet Ali Yilmaz, would go on and state in an interview that the following, which has been roughly translated. The fans all yell at us, President, please buy a striker. So we go and find a cannibal and buy him. His color is broken and he doesn't score. The person who he's calling a cannibal is Kevin Campbell. And at this act of racism by the own team's president, he would leave the club midseason, refusing to play. Honestly, this is justified. The president should have way more repercussions for saying something as outrageous as this in an interview. Diyarbakir 2001 This refers to a match played in the second division between Konya Sport and Diyarbakir Sport in 2001. Basically, whoever won the match would be promoted to the first division. However, it wouldn't be broadcasted on TV and there would be 4 red cards given to Konya Spor. And this would basically give Diyarbakir the easy win and they would go on to promote finishing 2nd place. Many people say this is match fixing. Kojeli Spor 4, Arsenal 1 As the name of the entry suggests, this was a game played between the two sides as a friendly match in 2004. 
but the coach of Kojele at the time, Hikmet Karaman, would say some things to get Wenger riled up before the match. Arsenal would field a strong lineup of players, including Patrick Vieira, Robert Pires, and Dennis Bergkamp, to name a few. However, they would go on to lose the match 4-1. Kojeli Sport would state their ambitions would be to get to the Champions League. They wouldn't come anywhere close. Rambo Flag This entry is tied with a previous one. When Sunas had planted a flag, a fanatic Fenerbahce fan nicknamed Rambo Okan would retaliate the favor in a match between Galatasaray and Samsung Sport in 2002. He would go and plant the flag with a Fenerbahce logo on it in the middle of the Galatasaray home stadium. He would also pull out a pointy kitchen utensil out to ward off any players that would try to take the flag out. This had gotten a lot of media coverage and he's kind of a big meme in Turkey. With his most recent big act of cutting the Trabzonspor championship flag off of the famous bridge in Istanbul. Tier 6. Well, here we are, the last two tiers. This is where the dark side of Turkish football takes place. Let's see what awaits us. Kayseri Atatürk Stadium Disaster. This refers to the deadliest sporting event in Turkish history. Sivaspor and Kayseri played each other in a September 17, 1967 match. The violence would start at halftime, where the Kayseri fans would start provoking the Sivas fans. The supporters of the two teams, some of whom were armed with pointy kitchen utensils and bats, would start throwing rocks at each other. Fans who tried to flee from the violence would cause a stampede in the front's exits. This would result in at least 300 people being injured, and unfortunately, 43 people would pass away. Suleyman Seba, MIT This refers to ex Besiktas president Suleyman Seba. He has won a multitude of different trophies, and also played with Besiktas as a player. The twist is that he would actually be an MIT agent. The MIT is kind of like the CIA, or any other intelligence agency you could think of. Although what he did during his time there is relatively unknown, you can't lie, this guy is pretty cool. Dude went from a pro footballer to a special agent. Hakan Shukur This entry refers to the player Hakan Shukur, who has the most goals in Super League history as well as the fastest goal at the World Cup. He also played an integral part to Galatasaray's UEFA Cup run. So from the outside looking in, you would think this guy has it all, from fame to money. But actually, no. He's not even allowed to enter his home country and is seen as a traitor to the state. This is because of his ties to the coup that tried taking over power from President Erdogan back in 2016. His assets are frozen, and the last time we've heard of him, he's working as an Uber driver to get by. He actually has an Instagram and YouTube that he uses often, and he currently lives in the USA. Well, this is it. Tier 6. We've reached the bottom of the iceberg. Let's dive into the final few entries. Engineer Oktay. This entry refers to the tragic story of a Besiktas fan. His name was Oktay Akdemir. He would work as an engineer in Italy and came to Turkey for leave. Deciding to go support his favorite team at a match, he would attend Besiktas vs Galatasaray on December 14, 1991. Unfortunately, what he didn't know is that this match would end his life. Some of the stories differ from the little details, but this is what we know happened. He was wearing a scarf of Besiktas colors and would fall into a group of Galatasaray supporters. He was then beaten to death and was heavily outnumbered. He was not a fanatic supporter or even did anything slightly wrong. This was a dark stain in the rivalries between the big three. And to this day, he is remembered as what happens when you take the game people love to watch for fun and turn it into something it isn't. Rest in peace. Vodafone Helicopter this entry refers to the night of July 15, 2016, when the coup with the plan to overthrow President Erdogan was happening, a military helicopter would land in the middle of Vodafone Park, carrying some of the people who were a part of the coup. They would go on to break out of the stadium by force and go seize a bus nearby to go to a nearby television studio. They probably chose to land in the middle of the Besiktas Stadium because it was a clear and open place with lights in it. Fener Bus Attacked this entry refers to an event that happened where after Fenerbahce beat Rizespor, they would go on to travel back to the Trabzon airport by bus. However, on their bus ride back, someone would, well I'm trying to keep this family friendly, use a weapon that pew pews to go and hit the bus driver with said pew pew. The bus driver would, was hit, however thankfully he did not succumb to his injuries, 
and the bus was stopped safely. Luckily this attack did not carry out as planned, and if it did, we may have seen a very tragic event in sports. Although two people were arrested, their motives were unclear. There are many theories to this day, such as crazy Trabzonspor supporters who wanted their revenge for a max fixing scandal, or some say it was planned by a higher organization which tried to ignite the country into a possible civil war. Whatever the reason is, we could just be glad that no one passed away that day. Adana Demirspor, President, 2010. Possibly one of the saddest things to happen in Turkish football. Basically, Adana Demirspor, which is now a team in the Super League, didn't quite have the right finances back in 2010. Club president Bekir Çınar tried his best to set the club back on track and save up money. However, the club was close to bankruptcy, so he decided to take the club's debts onto his personal finances. After this, he would go on TV to do an interview where he would tell the people of Adana in a very chilling way that the club's situation would, was dire. And at the end of the interview, he would say, I still want to thank everyone, maybe for the last time. What everyone didn't know is that this would be his last interview, as he would f be found hung. He used a rope with the colors of the club he loved the most, blue and ultramarine. Some view him as a hero because he saved his club. Some view him as a person who clearly needed mental help. May he rest in peace. So, what did you guys think of all the entries? Is there something crazy I missed? Which one was the most interesting to you? I just want to say, thank you all for watching this far. Please like this video and subscribe, as I will be making more just like this one.